Welcome to the review session on accounting for consignment transactions. Before we get started with the questions, I'll uh, tell you something in brief about what this chapter is all about. Well, consign means to send. So in case of a consignment sale, we have two parties. One is called a consigner, the other person is called a consignee. So the person who sends the goods to the consignee is called the consigner okay and the relationship between a consigner and a consignee is that of a principal and agent and so why does the consigner send goods to the consignee he wants the consigner wants the consignee to sell the goods on his behalf okay so the movement of goods from the consigner to the consignee is not a sale it is just a transfer of stock from the premises of the consigner to the premises of the consignee. The consignee sells the stock on behalf of the consigner and whatever proceeds the consignee gets, he remits it to the consigner. And uh, for this service that the consignee does, he is entitled to get a commission. Okay, And, um, and it, we should also keep in mind that the consignment in case of a consignment uh, arrangement or in case of a consignment sale the responsibility uh, or the risk that is attached to the goods is completely that of the consigner the consignee does not take or does not assume any risk uh, associated with the goods okay and uh, so uh, when the consigner sends goods to the consignee along with the goods he sends a pro forma invoice okay so the pro forma invoice is uh, a document that contains details of the goods that are sent by the consigner to the consignee and it also contains the price and uh, it's uh, it's not necessary that the consigner should uh, disclose the cost at which he has purchased the goods it is possible that he uh, discloses a price which is greater than the cost of the cost that he has incurred in order to purchase those goods so that is called the invoice price the price that appears on the pro forma invoice is called the invoice price and uh, as we proceed we'll understand how to value the closing stock which is at the consignee's go down the stock the consignment stock which is at the consignee's go down actually belongs to the consigner and so it has to be included along with the stock of the consigner it's possible that um, goods are lost during transit from the consigner's location to the consignee's location it's possible that the goods are destroyed uh, when they are stored at the consignee's go down so all these are examples of abnormal losses we'll see how to value the abnormal loss we'll also see how to value the normal loss uh, that occurs with respect to such goods so with this brief uh, background in mind let us look at the questions okay the relationship between the consigner and the consignee is that of a employer and employee bailer and bailey pledger and pledgy none of these yes answer is none of these because the relationship between the consigner and the consignee is that of principal and agent okay so uh, the consignee is the agent and the consigner is the principal in consignment the goods are dispatched on the basis that the goods will be sold on behalf of at the expense of and at the risk of the consigner okay so since it's a principal agency relationship all the risks and the rewards relating to the goods will be uh, will be attached to the consigner with reference to consignment which of the following is correct only ownership is transferred only possession is transferred both ownership and possession are transferred none of these so um, yeah we know that uh, here in case of consignment it's only the possession that gets transferred from the consigner to the consignee the ownership is still retained with the consigner and that's why we include the value of the stock that's lying with the consignee along with the consignor's stock so it's only the possession that is transferred and not the ownership 
the consigner sends the proforma invoice to the consignee. Okay, so the consigner sends proforma invoice to the consignee, and the answer is A. Okay, so what does the consignee send to the consigner? The consignee also has to send a document periodically to the consigner and that document is called account sales. So what does this account sales contain? Basically this account sales contains details of uh, how much the consignee has sold, what are the expenses that he has incurred on behalf of the consigner so far, what is the commission that is due to him, what is the amount of advance that he has already sent to the consigner and uh, the balance amount that is due to be remitted by the consignee to the consigner. So that is account sales. Out of the following, at which point the treatment of sales and consignment is the same? See, in case of a sale, there is a transfer of ownership for a consideration. There is transfer of ownership for consideration. Okay, so but in case of consignment, it's only outflow of stock, and there is no transfer of risk. So the only commonality between sales and consignment is that there is outflow of stock. Next, which of the following statements is correct? Consignee will pass a journal entry in his books at the time of receiving goods from the consigner. No, the consignee does not pass any entry in his books when he receives goods from the consigner. Consignee will not pass a journal entry in his books at the time of receiving goods from the consigner. That is a correct statement. We look at C. Ownership of goods will be transferred to consignee at the time of receiving goods. No, only the possession gets transferred. Consignee will treat consignor as a creditor at the time of receiving goods. No, the consignee will not treat the consignor as a creditor because the, the relationship or the transaction between the consignor and the consignee is not that of a credit um, a sale. Right. So the answer is B. Next. When selling price is equal to invoice price and no adjustment is made to eliminate loading, consignment account will show only a loss. See, um, this is like this. When selling price is equal to the invoice price. Invoice price, I told you, is the price that appears on the pro forma invoice. So when we open a consignment account and uh, we show goods sent on consignment on the debit side of the consignment account at invoice price and we, and we don't eliminate the loading, then the uh, cost of the goods or the uh, debit side of the consignment account will reflect uh, the invoice price which is higher than the cost, uh, actual cost of the goods that have uh, been sent. Secondly, all the expenses will be recorded on the debit side of the consignment account. Now when we come to the credit side of the consignment account, we are going to show the sales that the uh, consignee has made and uh, if the selling price is going to be equal to the, if the selling price is going to be equal to the um, invoice price, then uh, we'll be left with only a loss. So it, it's important to remove the loading or it's important to remove the profit element which is there in the uh, goods sent on consignment account. Goods of the invoice value of rupees 6 lakhs sent out to consignee at a profit of 20% on cost. What is the cost of goods sent? So uh, when the invoice value is 6 lakhs, uh, and it says that uh, profit is 20% on cost. So 1 by 5 on cost is 1 by 6 on sales. So we apply 1 by 6 on 6 lakh. So the profit is 1 lakh. And so the cost is 6 lakhs minus 1 lakh which is 5 lakhs. Next. Goods of the invoice value of rupees 4 lakh 80 sent out to consignee at a profit of 20% on cost. So again here 1 by 5 on cost is 1 sixth on sales and we apply 1 by 6 on 4 lakh 80. Uh, the profit is 80,000 rupees and yeah the question is what is the loading? The loading is 80,000 rupees. Next, X sent out certain goods to Y of Delhi at a profit of 20% on invoice price. One tenth of the goods were lost in transit. Invoice value of goods lost is 25,000. 
they are asking us to find out what is the invoice value of goods sent out on consignment invoice value of goods lost is 25000 rupees and they are saying that this represents one tenth of the goods that were lost in trans of it represents one tenth of the uh, goods that were sent so if we take the uh, reciprocal of this fraction we get 25000 into 10 by 1 which is 250000 rupees and so the invoice value of goods sent on consignment is 250000 rupees Next, consignment stock will be recorded in the balance sheet of a consigner on the asset side at invoice value, invoice value less stock reserve at lower than cost price at 10% lower than invoice value. Okay, so the consignment uh, stock will be recorded in the balance sheet at invoice price less the stock reserve. That is, we have to remove the loading so that the consignment uh, comes to its cost. And strictly speaking, we need to compare the value of the stock at cost and the value of stock at NRV and whichever is lower has to be taken to the balance sheet as an asset. Next, X sends out 1000 bags to Y costing rupees 400 each at an invoice price of 500 rupees each. Consigners um, expenses rupees 4000 consignees expenses non selling expenses are 1000 selling expenses are 2000 800 bags were sold what is the value of consignment stock at invoice price okay so here we are trying to value the consignment stock so when we value stock we have to remember the principles that we studied in accounting standard 2 okay so when we value uh, inventory it is not uh, the value of the inventory or the cost of the inventory is not just the basic purchase price but all the expenses that have been are all the expenses that are directly attributable in order to bring the inventory to its present location and condition okay so here we have to include in addition to the basic cost we have to include consignors expenses and the consignees non-selling expenses why are we not including selling expenses because these expenses are incurred after bringing the inventory to its present location and condition and accounting standard 2 specifically excludes four categories of expenses from not being included in the inventory valuation such expenses are not inventoriable what are those expenses? Selling and distribution expenses, storage expenses, abnormal loss and administration expenses. Okay, so here when we value stock and here they are asking us to value stock at invoice price. So first of all, we have to see how many uh, bags we have in our closing stock. So, um, a thousand bags were sent. 800 bags were sold which means we have 200 bags in stock so this is the stock okay now when we value stock we have to take the basic um, yeah we have to take the basic purchase price but here since we are they are asking us to value it at uh, invoice price we have to include the loading also only then we'll get the invoice price invoice price per bag is 500 rupees Next, we have to take, I, as I told you, the expenses that have been incurred by the consigner, consigner's expenses and consignee's non-selling expenses. Okay, all these have to be considered. The total expenses incurred is 4,000 by the consigner and 1,000 rupees by the consignee. So the total inventoriable cost is 5000 rupees but this has been incurred on 1000 bags. So we have to find out what is the proportionate expense on 200 bags which is 5 rupees into 200. Therefore the value of stock will be 200 into 500 is 1 lakh plus these expenses so the value of closing stock is 1 lakh 1000 rupees
ओके सो आंसर इज डी नेक्स्ट फॉरवर्डिंग एंड इंश्योरेंस चार्जेस फिफ्टी थाउजेंड इनकर्ड बाई कंसाइन और एक्सपेंसिस इनकर्ड बाई कंसाइनी लैंडिंग एंड क्लियरिंग फोर्टीन हंड्रेड गो डाउन रेंट टू थाउजेंड अनलोडिंग एक्सपेंसिस टू थाउजेंड एट हंड्रेड सेलिंग एंड डिस्ट्रीब्यूशन एक्सपेंसिस फिफ्टीन हंड्रेड ट्रांसपोर्ट चार्जेस अपॉन गो डाउन अप टू गो डाउन इज फाइव थाउजेंड सिक्स हंड्रेड एडवर्टाइजमेंट एंड इंश्योरेंस इज ट्वेल्व हंड्रेड एस्टेब्लिशमेंट कॉस्ट इज फोर थाउजेंड द अमाउंट ऑफ एक्सपेंसिस टू बी कंसिडर्ड वेल वैल्यूंग कंसाइनमेंट स्टॉक इज वॉट ओके सो एज आई टोल्ड यू वी हैव टू कंसिडर ऑल द एक्सपेंसिस द कंसाइनर हैज इनकर्ड एंड विथ रेस्पेक्ट टू कंसाइनी वी हैव टू इंक्लूड ओनली हिज नॉन सेलिंग एक्सपेंसिस ओके सो विथ रेस्पेक्ट टू द कंसाइनी वील इंक्लूड फोर्टीन हंड्रेड वी विल नॉट इंक्लूड गो डाउन रेंट बिकॉज इट इज स्टोरेज कॉस्ट अनलोडिंग एक्सपेंसिस येस यू हैव टू इंक्लूड Two thousand eight hundred selling and distribution expenses. No, it is specifically excluded. Transportation charges up to the go down. Yes, we have to include it. Advertisement and insurance should not be included. Establishment costs are in the nature of administration costs that should also not be included. Therefore, the costs that will be included are fifty thousand plus. Thousand four hundred, which is fifty one four hundred, fifty one four hundred plus two thousand eight hundred is fifty four two hundred, fifty four two hundred plus five thousand six hundred is fifty nine six hundred, fifty nine eight hundred. Okay, so the answer is D. Stock loss due to fire, theft, flood, etc. is an abnormal loss. Next. Goods sent out costing ninety thousand to Y at a profit of twenty five percent on invoice price. One tenth of the goods were lost in transit. Two thirds of the goods received are sold at twenty percent above the invoice price. What is the amount of sales that Y has made? Okay. So here, uh, goods costing ninety thousand have been sold at one by four on invoice at a profit of one by four on invoice price. So one by four on invoice price is one by three on cost, and so therefore the total invoice value of the goods sent is lakh and ninety thousand. Okay, so invoice price of goods sent is ninety plus thirty. Lakh and twenty. Okay. Then it says the problem says uh, one tenth are lost in transit. Okay, so which means twelve thousand is lost in transit. So the consignee receives goods having an invoice price of lakh and eight thousand rupees. Then. Uh, two thirds of the goods received are sold at twenty percent above invoice price. Okay, so sales is two by three of lakh and eight, which is two into thirty six thousand rupees, which is seventy two thousand rupees. Sales has been seventy two thousand rupees, but they have been sold at twenty percent above the invoice price. So plus. One by five of seventy-two thousand, which is fourteen thousand four hundred. Therefore, it is eighty-six four hundred sales made. This is the sales made. Eighty-six thousand four hundred. Okay. Next, X sent out two thousand two hundred boxes um, to Y, costing hundred each. Consignor's expenses are two thousand rupees. Consignee's selling expenses are thousand rupees. Three fifth of the goods are sold by the consignee. Half of the balance goods were lost in consignee's go down due to fire. What is the value of abnormal loss? Okay, so here uh, we are asked to value abnormal loss. We have to remember that abnormal loss is valued the same way as we value our closing stock. So um, first of all, let's find out how many boxes have been lost due to fire. Two hundred boxes were sent. Okay, and uh, 
of this three fifth was sold by the consignee so three fifth of two hundred one twenty were sold which means one twenty was sold which means we are left with eighty in the go down and uh, it says half of the balance goods half of the balance goods were lost so half of this which means 40 are lost okay so when we value uh, 40 the abnormal loss I told you we have to value just as we value stock so we will start with the basic purchase price of 100 rupees and uh, consignors expenses we don't include consignee selling expenses we should include only the proportionate uh, share of consignors expenses for these 40 boxes the consigner has incurred thousand two thousand rupees for 200 boxes which means he has incurred 10 rupees on every box so on um, 40 boxes it's 400 rupees so the basic purchase price of 40 boxes is 4000 rupees the proportionate expenses to be added to the cost of inventory is 400 and so 4400 is the um, value of abnormal loss okay so the answer is B next stock that is lost due to inherent characteristics of the commodity is normal loss for example goods that are lost due to um, because they are perishable in nature like fruits or certain goods which are lost because of evaporation so um, such to a certain extent the loss is permissible and that loss because of the inherent characteristic of the commodity is called abnormal loss sorry normal loss with reference to consignment which of the following is correct normal loss is debited to consignment account abnormal loss is debited to consignment account abnormal loss is credited to consignment account normal loss is credited to consignment account see uh, abnormal loss is credited to consignment account is the correct answer a normal loss is not shown separately in the consignment account at all because the normal loss is absorbed by the good units in case of uh, the consignment accounts okay so the answer is C next thousand kgs of apples are considered or they are consigned they are consigned to a wholesaler the cost being rupees 3 per kg plus rupees 400 of freight it is known that a loss of 15 percent is unavoidable okay so which means 15 percent is normal loss now as I told you the normal loss will be borne by the good apples right so um, the in this case the good apples is 850 kgs because thousand kgs 15% is normal loss okay so the goods consigned is 1000 kgs but 15% is uh, normal loss so we have good apples is 80 850 kgs so the good apples will have to bear the entire cost okay they have to bear the entire cost that is 3000 plus 400 this 3400 will have to be borne by uh, 850 um, good apples okay and so answer is 3400 divided by 850 sorry um, mm. okay we'll change the question a little okay because it um, doesn't match with the answer uh, we'll change the question um, 
will make it 2000 kgs of apple are, con are consigned to a 2000 kgs are consigned to a wholesaler the cost being rupees 3 per kg plus a 400 of freight and uh, let us say the uh, loss is 15% okay 15% is unavoidable which means um, this is 2000 kgs it's not 1000 kgs so 15% of 2000 is 300, uh, 300 which means we have 1700 kgs of good ha good apples and 3400 is the cost that has to be borne by 1700 kgs so this is 2 per kg so the cost per kg becomes Next, unless otherwise agreed, a del credder and overriding commission are allowed on net sales. Okay, so answer is D for this question. See, a del credder commission is a commission that is given to the consignee when the consignee agrees to take over the risk of bad debts arising out of credit sales. An overriding commission is a commission that is paid if the consignee is able to sell at a price which is greater than the stipulated selling price or the specified selling price. So that is uh, D. Next, the commission received from consignor is transferred to the general profit and loss account. In case the con for the consignee, it is an income and so it is transferred to the general p and account. Overriding commission is allowed to um, option A to affect sales in the normal course of business to bear the bad debts on account of uh, credit sales to affect selling price uh, to affect sales at a price uh, greater than the price fixed yes so uh, it's C so overriding commission is allowed when the consignee is able to sell at a price which is greater than the specified selling price. So in order to encourage or in order to recognize the effort that the consignee has taken in order to sell at a price greater than the specified selling price, he is given overriding commission. Next. Uh, goods uh, X sent out goods costing rupees 80,000 to Y so as to show 20% profit on invoice price. 40% goods were lost in transit. 60% of the goods received were sold half at invoice price and the balance at 25% above the invoice price. Rate of commission is 10% on sales at invoice price plus 50% of gross sales less all commission exceeds the invoice price the amount of commission will be how much okay so here let's do the basic calculation of how much uh, sales have been made by the consignee okay so the uh, invoice price of or let's say the goods um, So the invoice price of goods sent out by the consigner to the consignee is 80,000 plus 1 by 4 on 80,000 because it's 1 by 5 on, on selling price so it's 1 by 4 on cost. So 1 lakh is the invoice price of goods sent by the consigner. Okay. So invoice price of goods sent is equal to rupees 1 lakh which is 80,000 plus a loading of 20,000 okay but then what happens is 40% is lost in transit so less loss in transit is 40,000 rupees which means goods having an invoice price of 60,000 reach the consignee okay now what happens is half of this no not exactly half of this he says 60% of the goods received 60% of this is 36,000 rupees 60% of 36,000 was sold but how were they sold half of this 36,000 which is 18,000 were sold at 18,000 itself 
while the remaining half were sold in order to show a profit of okay 25% above the invoice price so it is 18000 plus 25% of 18000 which is 22500 rupees okay fine so this is the basic computation that we have so the total sales made by the consignee is 18000 plus 22500 which is 4500 okay next what are they asking us to calculate they are asking us to calculate the commission and what are the terms of commission let's do it here let's do the commission calculation in this portion okay they say that the basic commission is 10% on sales at invoice price that is the basic commission 10% on sales at invoice price will be 10% of 18,000 plus 18,000 which is 36,000 which is 3,600 rupees this is the basic commission in addition to this he is entitled to get some uh, overriding commission and how is that overriding commission calculated it says overriding commission will be equal to 50% of gross sales gross sales is 4500 less all commission all commission means basic commission plus um, overriding commission let us say total commission is X this should exceed the invoice price of 36,000 rupees this is how overriding commission is calculated okay so we'll open a new sheet and we'll do the calculation okay so we are assuming that the total commission total commission which is basic plus overriding commission is equal to X okay so we know that the basic commission is equal to 3600 rupees okay and overriding commission is equal to 50% of gross sales less all commission exceeds the sales at invoice price now we have to substitute okay so 3600 plus 50% of 40,500 minus X minus 36,000 is equal to X So X minus 3600 is equal to half of 4500 minus X okay which is equal to 2250 minus X by 2 3 X by 2 is equal to 3600 minus 2250 which is equal to 1450 3x is equal to 3 yeah we'll just go through this again this calculation okay so X minus 3600 is uh, half of 4500 minus X which is 2250 minus X by 2 so X plus X by 2 is equal to sorry X plus X by 2 is equal to 3600 plus um, 2250 which is equal to 5850 okay and so x is equal to 5850 into 
2 by 3 which is equal to 1 6 5 0 1 1 9 5 0 sorry 1 9 5 0 into 2 which is equal to 3900 rupees so the total commission that is payable to the consignee is uh, 3900 rupees okay next the commission allowed by consignor to the consignee to bear the bad debts on the on account of credit sales is called del credit commission okay which of the following statements is not true if del credit commission is allowed bad debts will not be recorded in the books of the consignor yes it is true this is a true statement because del credit commission is allowed only for the consignee to bear the bad debts it will not appear in the books of the consignor if del credit commission is allowed bad debts will be debited in consignment account is false del credit commission is allowed by consignor to consignee is uh, true del credit commission is generally relevant for credit sales is true so the false statement is b next Opening consignment stock is 20,000 rupees. Goods sent out on consignment is 4 lakhs. Consignors' expenses is 10,000. Consignees' expenses are 4,000. Cash sales 2 lakhs. Credit sales 2 lakh 20. Consignment stock is 1 lakh. Ordinary commission payable to consignee is 5,600. Del credit commission is 2% on credit sales. Amount irrecoverable from, from customer is 4,000. What is the profit on consignment? Okay, so in order to calculate the profit on consignment, we have to open an account called the consignment account. Okay, so let's open an account called the consignment account. Okay. We'll put debit credit. Consignment account is a nominal account and uh, we uh, prepare the consignment account in order to ascertain the profit or loss that we have made on a particular consignment transaction right so first is we have to record the opening stock opening stock is 20,000 rupees goods sent on consignment to goods sent on consignment is uh, 4 lakhs okay consignors expenses yes so to bank consigner has incurred 10,000 rupees to consignee with respect to expenses he has incurred 4,000 rupees we have to pay him commission commission is uh, 5,600 ordinary commission del credit commission is it says it is 2% on credit sales credit sales made is 2,22% is 4,400 uh, and then there are no other expenses so now we come to the credit side of the consignment account by uh, sales it will be both cash and credit okay so 2 lakhs plus 2 lakh 20 4 lakh 20 this is just like preparing our trading and PL account and uh, by closing stock closing stock is okay there's no closing stock uh, yeah it's there 1 lakh okay and uh, so we have to find out the profit so this is 5 lakh 20 total is 5 lakh 20 and uh, when we find out the profit it will come to 72,000 rupees okay so uh, 72,000 is the answer
next if del credit commission is not allowed by consigner to consignee the bad debt will be debited to the consignment account because it becomes a loss for the consignor and it will be charged to the consignment account next nature of consignment is it is uh, a nominal account which means uh, okay in in con the context of this question it is a revenue in nature consignment account is prepared in the books of the consignor Goods sent on consignment account is also prepared in the books of the consignor. In the books of the consignor, loss on consignment business will be charged to the general profit and loss account. Whether it is profit or loss uh, on consignment, it is ultimately transferred to the general P and L account of the consignor. Which of the following items is not credited to consignment account? Uh, cash sales yes it is credited to the consignment account credit sales is credited to the consignment account consignment stock the closing consignment stock is shown on the credit side of the consignment account stock reserve on closing stock is to be shown on the debit side because when we show close closing stock at the invoice price on the credit side in order to remove the loading which is there in the closing stock we have to show it on the um, debit side of the consignment account next to eliminate loading on the closing stock the entry that we have to pass is we have to debit consignment account and credit stock reserve account okay so because we are credit we are creating a stock reserve and so we have to credit the stock reserve by debiting the consignment account so um, the entry is consignment account is debited and stock reserve is credited to eliminate loading on goods sent on consignment account okay um, entry will be goods sent on consignment account debit to consignment account so when goods are sent on consignment we pass the entry consignment account debit to goods sent on consignment account this is at the invoice price so in order to bring the goods sent on consignment to the cost price we have to eliminate the loading and the entry will be just the reverse that is we will debit goods sent on consignment and credit consignment account next c consigned goods costing rupees 6000 to his agent at delhi freight and insurance paid by consignor is rupees 100 consignee's expenses are rupees 400 four fifth of the goods were sold for 6000 rupees commission is 2% on sales consignee wants to settle the balance with the help of a bank draft what will be the amount of draft okay so here we have to find out the amount to be received from the consignee so uh, since we don't want to find out the profit we have to open the consignee account to find out how much is due to the consigner from the consignee okay so this consignee is a personal account okay freight and insurance paid by the consignor okay consignee has incurred 400 rupees so entry will be consignment to consignee so here we will write by consignment for the expenses incurred by the consignee it is 400 rupees next uh, the consignee has sold goods for 6000 rupees so entry will be consignee to consignment to consignment 6000 rupees next commission is 2% on sales entry is consignment to consignee so by consignment the so commission it is 2% on sales so it is 120 next um, consignee wants to settle the balance so this is the balance by uh, bank 5480 okay so answer is a next question 
X sent out 1000 boxes to Ram of Delhi costing 100 each at a profit of 1 sixth on invoice price. Goods sent on consignment will be credited in the, gen the general trading account will be, it will always be at cost. Okay, so the information given to us with respect to profit is only to distract us. So uh, the entry is, uh, so the amount will be 1000 into 100 which is 1 lakh. Next, X purchased 2000 boxes costing 100 each, 400 were sent out to Y at cost plus 25%, 1200 boxes were sold at 120 each. The amount of gross profit to be recorded in the general trading account will be how much? So X is purchasing 2000 boxes, he sent 400 on consignment to Y and he himself is selling 1200 boxes. Okay, so with respect to the boxes that he has sold, the gross profit that he has made is 20 rupees on every box. So the answer is 24,000 rupees. If uh, Dell Credit Commission is allowed for bad debts, consignee will debit the bad debts to the cons commission earned account. Okay, because it is a loss for the consignee and the net commission that he will receive will be the gross commission minus the bad debts. Okay, next consignee does not pass any entry for goods sent on consignment. Yes, he does not pass any entry for goods that he receives. He does not pass any entry for profit or loss on consignment because it is not his consignment and he does not make any profit. The only remuneration that he gets or consideration that he gets is the commission. Consignment stock? No, because it is not his stock. Okay, so D, all of the, all of the above is the answer. Next. X sent out goods uh, costing rupees 6 lakhs to Y. The rate of commission is normal 2% plus 3% uh, Dell Credit Commission. The entire goods are sold by consignee for rupees 8 lakhs. However, the consignee is able to recover 7,90,000 from the debtors. The amount of profit to be transferred to PNL account as net commission by the consignee is how much? Okay. So here, um, the total sales that the consignee has made is 8 lakhs on which he is entitled to get commission of 5%. Okay, so 5% on 8 lakhs is 40,000 rupees. But there are bad debts of 10,000 rupees, so that will be deducted from his commission. Right, so his total loss is, uh, uh, sorry, the net income that he gets by way of commission is 30,000 rupees. Okay, so with that, uh, we come to the end of uh, the review session on consignment accounts. In case you have doubts, uh, please feel free to mail me at queries at graymatteracademics.com. So until next time, goodbye.